Hello my friends and welcome, let's go straight to the front lines to be more precise to Avdiivka. Here we have the good update for Ukrainian army, yet it's not shown on the deep state military map, but from the reliable sources we understand that Ukraine continued to strike Russian positions and there was the movement in favor of Ukraine today on the north from Krasnogorivka. So here are the two parts of the front lines where Ukraine gained the ground. Or, according to some other information, this could be just the military map update, based on the satellite and drone images, because before this territory was claimed by Russia as under their control. In Avdivka, Russia still struggles to get the railroad under their control. They are not moving today. Well, there is the movement. I will show you the drone videos a little later, but there is no ground gain from the Russian side. All of their attacks are just vanished in those fields. This video was filmed by the Ukrainian drones in that area. It shows the mid-wave tactics, which Russia decided to use in Avdivka. They are under constant artillery fire, but nevertheless they continue bringing lots of the infantry forces one by one. So usually they use the armored vehicles, like for example this one, this is the BMP-2. By the way, the driver was very bad with his vehicle, he ran over his own infantry. And they have a lot of those constantly sending them to the front lines with more and more infantry. To propel forward they use the tank with the mining plague. This one was stopped by Ukrainian army. By the way my friends, I put some of the censorship on those screenshots. The full videos you might find on my telegram channel, which you may find in a video description just below. I believe that those tanks are already very close to Ukrainian positions, because now we obtain the videos with some anti-tank missiles operation. So before mainly it was artillery, now anti-tank missiles like Stugna or tow missiles. Plus we also have Matador and AT4 and I think many more modifications. We have more good news. Ukrainian army was able to gain some ground in Svatova direction. This is the northern part of the front lines. We were very successful there. Nevertheless, Russia also continued their assault operations but without any success. We also have the drone videos from the place. There Ukraine used lots of the Stugna anti-tank weaponry. It is by the way made in Ukraine. It's been a while since we saw those iconic videos, because mostly it was artillery and drone jab before. Now enemy wants to move forward and for that Stugna is awesome. On this picture we might see what the Russian mid-wave attacks look like. So the previous Russian military delegation was completely kaputed over here as well. Nevertheless, they continue their assaults. It seems like they are just blind, moving forward constantly. What are the expectations of the soldiers inside those army vehicles? I am out of clue. But the destiny for them is basically the same. And here is one more advancement of Ukrainian army in Serhivka. Before, Russia took this village under control, I think a couple of months ago, and here Ukraine tries to return it back. The idea for Russia was to go to Borova, but they were totally unsuccessful. Yes, they took some of the ground, but were pushed by Ukraine. Ukrainian army back to their positions almost. If we take this village under control, it means that Russians definitely just wasted their resources. Some interesting Russian vehicles were spotted in Avdivka directions. Those are the tracks from the World War II, which are made for the Ford license. I wonder why Russia sent those to the front lines. Probably I'm a little mistaken, but it seems like those are the very old tracks. Definitely very similar, but I cannot state 100% that Russia uses those vehicles. Maybe I'm wrong. What's about the bridgehead on the south? Russia started to use lots of the aviation bombs against our guys who landed on the other shore across the Dnieper River. The situation is terrible for us, but still Russia lost their positions. Unfortunately, Ukraine is unable to send the heavy armored vehicles and tanks to the place, so it's early to say about this bridgehead whether it will be successful or not. But I think that this operation is serious and we're gonna continue the assault. Maybe not even from this place, maybe towards to Oleshki. The idea is to land as many forces as possible across the Dnieper River to deflect the attention of the Russian army and then strike at one direction somewhere. Today Russia published the operation of their aviation bombs. As you can see, they're really far away from the Dnieper River. Sure, it means that Ukrainian forces were able 
to move quite a lot from the river. They are targeting the nearby village, so our guys are probably there. The Russian aviation bombs are very destructive, but they are not very precise compared to JDAMs. More videos of the ambushed Russian convoys near to Avdivka start to appear in internet. I am unable again to publish them on this platform, so please go to my telegram. Those videos are not from the today's Russian assault, they were filmed during the last week. But this one was filmed today, our guys were able to stop one more assaulting Russian convoy close to Avdiivka. We have the clarification of the exact position of that convoy, definitely it is close to Avdiivka. Here we have the losses for both of the sides for the last three days. And what can I say, Russia totally lost 118 of the vehicles, Ukraine lost 22 of them. 1 to 6 if we speak about the general losses from all of the front lines, but in Avdivka Russia has the ratio 1 to 28. We may say that the last week Russia lost their potential in attacking Ukrainian tanks from their K-52 attack helicopters, because they lost totally 15 of them, so 7 were totally kaputed, destroyed, burned out on the aprons and 8 were damaged and unable to continue the service at least without the heavy maintenance. Also Russia lost 9 of the transport helicopters Mi-8, 2 were destroyed and 7 damaged. But the real target for attack camps were the K-52 helicopters, because they are really pain in the ass for Ukrainian assaulting army on the south. With attack camps we were able to get rid of those helicopters, Russia may produce more of them, but not more than 4 per year. That is according to the last information I heard about those helicopters production. And still they have around 30 of the K-52 helicopters actively flying. I think they already lost around 70% of their K-52 fleet. Again, we don't have the sufficient evidence calling those damaged helicopters as destroyed, but from what I saw, definitely the damage for them is significant. A big kaboom was reported today in the Sevastopol harbor. It was the ground explosion, however, Russia called that they shut down some of the drones. Yet we are out of the information of what exactly was kaboomed there. Meanwhile, Russia continued to target the Ukrainian civilian infrastructure. This is the big post office, the civilian post office. It is placed in the Kharkiv city, so the last night Russia attacked this place. Unfortunately, six of the people lost their lives. It was not really during the night time, but the late evening, so there were some of the employees in this storage. Russia had launched two of the S-300 missiles to target this place. Also, Russia started to launch the new types of the drones equipped with those small engines. Those are much smaller compared to the Shahid drones. They were spotted also in the Kharkiv region and as you can see, one of those were shut down. Russians purchased this equipment from the AliExpress Chinese shop. It costs around $500, very cheap. Let's continue with the Russian losses topic. According to the British Defense Intelligence report, Russian losses increased by 90% since they start to assault in Avdiivka. There was the day that they lost 1,300 soldiers per day. So tremendous losses and as you can see the mid wave tactics still continue. Totally Russia lost up to 190,000 soldiers. And here we speak about the permanent casualties, life loss or permanently wounded, unable to continue the fight. But if we take the temporary wounded too, the number will reach 290,000 Russian soldiers. It's crazy number. It is not really far away from the Ukrainian statistics. There was also the information that Ukrainian army was successful kicking Russians out of the western outskirts of Robot but we don't have the confirmation about this event from the military map updates. I checked every one of them and there is no movement unfortunately. However, Ukraine continued to push the Russian army also near to Robotina and Verbova. But the situation there is mostly standstill for a long time. After three weeks everything will be green colored over here. It might even stay like that till the springtime. It depends on what winter we will have this year. 
The last winter was very warm as for Ukraine, so the fighting continued. Today, some of the mainstream media shared the information that China is up to send six warships to the Middle East. Obviously not the air carriers, but still. So China wants to show their own interest in the Middle East, probably expanding the military influence in that region. There is also the sea accident happened today. The Chinese warship collided with civilian ship. The civilian one belongs to Philippines. China is aggressively building some of the artificial islands not far away from Philippines, claiming that the territorial waters around those islands belong to China. So Chinese warship tries to block some of the Philippinian ship and after all it collided with this one big ship. No significant damage was caused, but still this is the rise of the tensions in that region. Let's go back to Ukraine. In general, about the front lines, the hottest spot now still Avdivka. Russia continued their mid-wave tactics on both of the flanks, on the south and on the north. Yes, for now the Ukrainian army is able to stop the Russian assault, but if the Russian army continue to push with more resources, finally, unfortunately, they will be able to take some of the ground. That's why Ukraine sends more reserves to counteract to the Russian assaults. Hopefully, our guys will stand over there. Avdivka is very important for us because it opens the gates to reach Donetsk city. It's very close for the future operations of Ukrainian army to liberate this region. Russia also suffers on the south and today we have the confirmation that they sent some of the convoys with more military aid to reinforce their defense near to Verbove and Robotne. Germany introduced the new military budget for 2024. For Ukraine, they'll spend 5 billion euros the next year. It's great. But still, the main help we receive from the United States of America, unfortunately, because of the situation in Congress, all of the military aid to Ukraine is now blocked, the new military aid. But we have the existing military contracts and the White House administration has enough funds for financing those. My friends, don't forget to press the like to this video and also if you want to support my channel, you may find some of the links in the video description just below. Special thanks for my Patreon supporters and also the sponsors of my YouTube channel. Guys, you are awesome. I wish you all a peaceful sky wherever you are and have a great time.